This is a special edition of Bloomberg Surveillance, a very special conversation to look forward to 2018 to help you frame where we are now and what some of the, well, economic and investment realities are for the year ahead. We can do no better than Edward S. Hyman of Evercore in very much his ISI. For decades, Ed Hyman has been the definitive voice of market economics. His daily notes, as I've said for years, are chart, paragraph, chart, maybe another paragraph with a healthy dose of Ed Hyman, big, bold, black, sharpie markings. Shut up and read this. That's what he says in his daily note that is a required read on Global Wall Street. This half hour required listening for the new year. Ed Hyman, Ed, thrilled to have you with us. My pleasure. When Happy get, New Year. To Happy you. New Year to you. When you get the black Sharpie out and you're standing at your desk over on Fifth Avenue, what are you marking up with the greatest intensity right now? Yeah, well, I, I hate to disappoint you, but it's now all electronic. Okay, well, let's pretend <laughs> it's, it's the, the old days <laughs> with the Sharpies. What are you circling the most it's right the now? So, you know, what I'm circling the most are earnings. You know, that's, uh, we could, we'll have a good conversation here, but at the end, it's all about earnings. And earnings right now, bottom up, these are from analysts, not from me, uh, are 145 for the third quarter of next year, and that's without tax cuts. So you add about $10 and you get uh, 155. And if you were to go three, three years with growth, uh, 10%, you get to 200. So I mean, these are huge numbers. And I just got through doing uh, sort of an exercise, like watching the game tape after the game. Sure. And uh, every market peak, earnings go down. Every market peak. And now they're going straight up. Within the straight up, and it, it's, it's the little things that we see, folks, through the month, through the quarter, through the year off the Bloomberg terminal. The other day, Honeywell, organic growth of 7 to 8%. That's a big number. Are the earnings going to come next year from the top line of unit and price combined into revenue? or are the earnings going to be manufactured by executives down the income statement? So the most exciting thing, as you know, is synchronized global growth. People are making money everywhere now. You know, South America, Europe, Eastern Europe, China, uh, Japan. And so that synchronized global growth is what's making earnings good now and probably make them really good next year. Uh, so that's, that's the main force. Not uh, so much manufactured as they have been. But they'll still be that. You'll have buybacks, probably a lot of buybacks off this tax cut. Well, that's where I wanted to go, is to use of cash and that you're going to have buybacks and dividends. Is, is the methodology of corporations going to change in their financial engineering, or is it still that pressure, I've got to perform? Uh, well, they've got to perform. Uh, I'm looking for next year to be the start of a new decade. So we've ended a decade of the post-financial crisis. Sure, 10 years. 10 years, Reinhardt Rogoff. Started in the summer of 2007, so we put in our decade. So I'm looking to see if things change next year. Uh, like the tax cut, uh, earnings get to be better, maybe wages accelerate, mm -hmm. and so uh, rates could go up uh, as the economy gets better. So I'm looking for the next year to be different uh, than the past decade, which has been really slow and steady which I've been focused on. It's the beginning of a new decade, and of course making the headlines in December, and frankly throughout all of his campaign and his first days in office, is Mr. Trump suggesting a run rate of 3%, or he often says 4% economic growth. Is that rhetoric, or do you have a real belief that we could get back with your new decade to that kind of GDP that leads to superior earnings? So, uh, I'm not a first responder. You know, I wait until I see it. Uh, so it looks as though the fourth quarter GDP is going to be 3%. That will be the third 3% quarter in a row, the first time in a decade that you've had three threes in a row. Uh, retail sales, as you and I have talked about, mm -hmm. you know, are just uh, spectacular uh, for November. They're up almost 6% on a year-on-year -year basis uh, for November, which makes the sure. fourth quarter look a little better. And then in the first quarter, you start to get tax cuts, maybe lifting confidence in spending. Uh, so I uh, have that, and then uh, we do these company surveys. They're consistent with 3% growth currently already. Mm -hmm. And then I have an econometric model, uh, and it's forecasting 3% growth. And none of this has tax right. cuts in it. 
So uh, I think 3% is probably the right number to go with right now. Uh, but I wouldn't rule out 4% no. if you get the tax cuts. But with the luxury of having you here for a half hour, let's drill in, folks, with Ed Hyman on one of the secrets of his research report. You do a report daily, 12 pages, 14 pages, and you go by it lightly, your company surveys. Your company surveys are acclaimed. I mean, I think of Alan Greenspan and his focus on the granularity. What, it, what do you see in the company surveys right now that gets your attention? Is it trucking? Is it electric usage? What is it right now? So let me mention one thing. You've screwed up my life. I have. You have. Okay. Because, Happy New Year. Because, <laughs> you know, there's so much news out there. So I started out doing a weekly report. Then I went to a daily report. Now I'm doing two, day, two reports a day yeah. because it's so hard to keep up with, with you because the news is there. But uh, on the company surveys, uh, they've been moving up. Uh, they're now about 54. They were 48. At 48, they're consistent with uh, something like 1% growth. At mm. four, 54, where they are now, about 3% uh, three three, three growth. The most exciting thing, and this we'll have to see if, if this lasts for the, the duration sure. of this uh, interview, uh, or the, the, uh, the duration of the way that you put this out over time, is that uh, our survey of retailers' pricing power uh, has been going up for two years. It's still very weak. It's 28, zero to 100. Right. And the last two weeks, I'll get another reading tomorrow, it went to 30. So I'm beginning to think That's that, almost, a, well, it's a little bit of a lift, 28 you know, to it, 30. Yeah. Well, but it came from 20. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually up <clears throat> a fair amount. And then retail sales, I mentioned up 5.8%. Uh, That's in nominal terms. So it includes price right. if they're getting some. So that's, that's the main thing I've noticed. The strongest uh, story we have is Cap Goods. All right, well, let's go, let's go to Cap Goods. We've seen that one of the stories for 2017 was the real challenges at General Electric. Maybe that was the uh, Alstom purchase in Europe and their capital goods problems and power supplies. But do you finally see capital investment and with that, that pricing power at the top line, that confidence that comes in pricing power away from retail? Yes. So this week, uh, or just recently, they had the NFIB come out for November, up three points. Mm. I don't know if it's a record high, but if it's not, it's close but to a record high. But from the election, it's a, it's a jump condition and in confidence. Jump, and then it's been holding, and then this month, it had another jump, a three-point jump. Yesterday, that's small business. Mm. Yesterday, they had the Duke Fuqua survey, uh, and it went to a 13-year high. So this is... CFOs of larger companies. Sure. Both of them are up. And every single survey that we do, every data point I see, like uh, durable goods, cap goods shipments, mm -hmm. cap, they're all up. And so cap spending is stronger than I thought it would be at this point, with operating rates still well below 80%. Yeah. Your offices are right down the street from the abode of the President of the United States. Is the pre if the President was sitting here, can you give him credit for a confidence boost? Or did this percolation of good news on the American economy and America earnings, did it begin before the election? I'm sure a lot of it started before the election. And this is such a charged topic, as you and I know from sure. our friends. Uh, but uh, business people I talk to say, I don't know what to make of Trump, but it's the most business-friendly environment I've been in in memory. And then you have the deregulation and then mm -hmm. the tax cuts. So I think it's understandable uh, from those points of view, plus synchronized global growth, uh, why business confidence is up. Tell me about the stock market and how you deal with it every day. You've got a whole team. ISI, folks, and Evercore ISI is not just about Ed Hyman. There's a whole team of people linking it into the markets. Do you have an enthusiasm about Dow 24,000 and a vision out to Dow 30,000 or whatever the number so, is, so or not? Believe me, I'm the least guy at, at my company. I'm over the hill, and they just put up with me. But uh, on this topic, there's a couple of interesting things I'd share with you. Please. Uh, so we're now going for the first perfect year ever. So 2017, right now, every month for the S&P has been up. That has never happened for every January, February, mm -hmm. March, December. Every month is up. The last time we came close was in 1995. We had one month down, was down four tenths. 
And of course, 95 was followed by 96, which was a 20% uh, mm -hmm. increase. Uh, so again, it's always about earnings. I don't have a strong view about how much the market will go up next year, uh, but with earnings are up, I think the stock market will go up as well. There's always surprises. Now here in December, in, in, in the autumn, we've seen the surprise of Mr. Murdoch jettisoning some of Fox over to Disney, and this is the M&A, CVS, Aetna, many yes. others that we've seen within mergers and acquisitions. Are they a good thing for America? Are they a symbol of a good time ahead to see those kind of well, larger synergies? Well, first, it's, I mean, you have to focus on it. I mean, you have to, you have to ask me what I think about it, and you need to think about it. Mm -hmm. And those are the two big ones just recently, about $50 billion a piece. So first, they indicate that there's a lot of liquidity in the system, mm -hmm. and it's being put to work. You could have money, but scared to put it to work. So they have the money, they're putting it to work, it fits a little bit with Da Vinci and Bitcoin, yeah. you know, those uh, juggernauts. Uh, but those two in particular, when they happen, uh, like on the Fox Disney, they said right. they're, they're going to cut out $700 billion in cost. Right. They put it $700 billion in efficiency. Efficiencies, yeah, <laughs> right. I noticed that. But, but well, if you're on the receiving end of the efficiency, uh, you're worried about your right. job. Well, we're going we're to come back and be efficient with Ed Hyman. So much to talk about uh, here. I would notice there's a vacancy of a vice chairmanship at the Fed. Vice Chairman Hyman, does that work? We'll talk central banks with Ed Hyman. Please stay with us. This special edition of Bloomberg Surveillance. special edition, Bloomberg Surveillance, a look forward to 2018, and we do that with Ed Hyman of Evercore ISA. Right now, we talk about maybe the larger view, the 60,000 uh, feet view. Let me go first to this important quote, and every time there's a report from Ed Hyman, there's one phrase that sticks out. We'll do Bitcoin here in a bit. We'll save that for us. Inflation at MIA. Whole Foods was selling a seven-foot Fraser fir on the Upper East Side of Manhattan for $38. The same tree was being sold by street <laughs> vendors to Tom Keene for about $150 to $220. I paid more than $220. Amazing. I put my name in there because actually I was the idiot on the street <laughs> buying the tree. What is the symbolism of, a, of an overpriced tree on the Upper East Side in Amazon Whole Foods? Amazon Whole Foods. So they're at least three downward pressures on inflation. Technology, te uh, competition, like Whole Foods versus the street vendors, and then globalization. And they're very strong and they're keeping inflation down. Uh, there was another one I picked up, uh, WiseCam, it's a little electronic thing. It's being sold on Amazon for $20. Mm -hmm. The competitive, similar product is Nest. And I was talking to yeah. a guy the other day, he said, I couldn't believe it, I saw it in your report, I went out and I bought two just to see if it was really there. So there's a lot of pressure on inflation, mm -hmm. including these uh, big mergers that we're talking about a, a minute ago. And so I've looked back, uh, and in the 20s, you had 4% growth and zero inflation for the last five years mm -hmm. you know, of, the, of the 1920s, and the stock market tripled. You've provided leadership to the Economic Club of New York. You've sat there through countless rubber chicken lunches listening to worthies of central banking. Do they have a clue what they're doing? Is there a foundation to our central bank work or are we making it up as we go? It's definitely both. I mean, there has been a complete revolution in central banking over a recent period of time to introduce zero rates, then QE, global QE, ECB, Bank of Japan, uh, risk, risk Bank, the Swiss Bank, Economy's booming. What the Swiss Bank did was extraordinary. With Minus 50 basis points. Yeah. And so this is wild. Within that and within the wildness of it is we've got a plan for 2018. What will you look for from Chairman Powell? Uh, I assume it's going to be a continuation. And I'd also notice that if he gets to be too aggressive, uh, he'll get a tweet. Uh, so there'll be some uh, pressure there. Well, if there's low rate Donald. Is there low rate Edward? Are you low, are you are you counseling? I'm not, we I'm, saw was it December uh, 13th? We saw uh, Charles Evans of Chicago descend along with Kashkari. Kashkari's in his own orbit. We all agree on that. If Neil was here, he would agree with us. But would you descend and say we need to be 
careful about hasty rate increases? No. I mean, the, you know, right now, from what I can tell, and I'm not, uh, you know, trying to be nice to the Fed, but they are doing a perfect job of setting us up. So they raised rates this week, uh, and we were all ready for it. We all, there wasn't a single person that would have objected. And every rate increase next year will be the same way, mm -hmm. whether it's two or five. That doesn't, you don't care about two, three, four, five. You're just watching the preparation and the right. discourse. Well, because each of those will be associated, let's say they're five, you know, way beyond what the market sure. has and way beyond what's likely now. But if they're five, it'll be you'll get a 4% GDP number, mm -hmm. you'll get uh, some big wage increases, mm -hmm. the unemployment rate will go below 4%, right. and people say, oh, they have the funds rate, uh, you need to have it close to three. Uh, but We'll be prepared for it if we get there. Right now, the funds rate, as you know, is one and a half. Inflation is one and a half. So we still have a zero real funds rate. Do you have a confidence that if we go away from QE to QT, some form of quantitative tightening, that we can do it within a stability that's good for American industrialists and good for the American population as it I'm is? I'm scared to death. You're scared to death of yeah. QT. Why? Because I've never been through it. And neither has anybody, <laughs> either you or Powell. And so we'll, they will approach it very carefully. My view is that reducing the balance sheet is the same as raising interest rates. And in the past, the stock market has gone up when they've been raising rates. Mm -hmm. and actually, it's gone up until they've finished raising rates. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I'll watch very carefully. But this is a ways out. Because you have to look at it on a global basis. You have to look at BC, ECB, BOJ, and the Fed. And those balance sheets in aggregate won't start coming down really until 2019. So this is, we're still going to keep adding this liquidity. This is a critical question then. In Ed Hyman's new decade, we begin a new decade, will it be a new decade of central banking? Uh, it's got to be, because we're going to have to get off of Q QE. So the past decade, I hadn't thought about this, Tom, but the past decade has been the decade of QE. Right. And so the next one, the only question is, maybe the next decade kills us. Okay. But uh, it'll have to be a decade in which we, we do it. You know, we get the Fed balance sheet down a couple of trillion, you start to work down the BOJ and ECB balance sheets. I like what you said about Bitcoin, 10 seconds. Do you own any Bitcoin? I don't own Bitcoin. I don't own it either. The, uh, the, I wish I did, <laughs> and I kick myself for not. I have a couple of friends who have, yeah. and uh, they're having a good time. I almost think I should buy some just to be in the game. Hey, well, top of the market, Ed Hyman buying Bitcoin here. <laughs> Thanks a lot, younger, Tom. beware. That's what we're going to talk about. Seriously, Ed Hyman with an important observation on Bitcoin. It is certainly the theme of 2017, what to do with this thing. We're talking too much about it. We're not talking enough about it. Ed Hyman on Bitcoin. We will do that next. This is a special edition of Bloomberg Surveillance. I'm Tom Keen from our world headquarters in New York. We welcome all of you worldwide. Thrilled you're with us through the holiday season, looking into 2018 with Ed Hyman of Evercore ISI. I never thought I would see Ed Hyman, well, write about Bitcoin, but there it is. It's all prevalent, and he takes a very different twist. This is not Bitcoin fanboy, or I think of what Professor Stiglitz said to us, Bitcoin ought to be outlawed. It's simply Ed Hyman observing what it means within the mix of his economics, his finance, and his investment. And you say it is a canary. Is it a canary in the coal mine? It's a canary in the coal mine, but I, I think I misstated it. What I'm trying to say is that it's an indication of all the liquidity in the system. It's not an indication that we're about to die, which is the canary in the coal sure, mine. Sure, fair, but, fair. Uh, I think it's an If you'd had your black Sharpie in 2017, this wouldn't have happened because you would have taken the <laughs> Sharpie and crossed it out. It, it would have happened for sure. <laughs> so what I see is basically incredible liquidity in the system. So you have uh, QE, rates are very low, and money growth is rapid. And you get something like the Da Vinci for $450 million. Mm -hmm. And then you have these deals that happen 
like the Fox Disney deal, and then you have the Bitcoin. And you say, don't you get it? Yeah. <laughs> There's something bigger than any of us right now going on. And then you see the stock market's going up and up and up. And of course, excess money can buy bonds. And that's why bond yields are so low. Price up, yield down. Price it's is up. Simple. Yeah, that's simple. Within this is the religion of many decades ago. You remember, I believe it was a Thursday, the world stopped for M1, M2, M3, almost a monetarist theory of economics. If you see a lot of money sloshing around, if that's the liquidity of the moment, how do we escape from that? Or is it something we should not be concerned about? Well, escaping from it is going to be, I'm pretty bearish longer term because but I'm not going to get in front of that for the short term but uh, in terms of the money supply uh, I met Milton Freeman when I was 23 and I fell in love with his thinking and uh, his intellect mm -hmm. and now I've decided that excess money is creating excess supply not excess demand so it's almost become deflationary and so that's the odd thing about what's going on right now. Within this, in the time that we've got left, Ed Hyman, I want to look back decades and, of course, all of the political tumult that we've seen through the election and now into this, and frankly, the elections in Europe uh, is, is well. Are you optimistic about American exceptionalism, your optimism on earnings? Well, that's a corporate thing. Or your optimism on a central bank that can get out of QT, maybe. Do you have an optimism about America? So the way you ask it is a little bit not the way I think, but I'm a very strong observer of what I see right now, which doesn't tell me necessarily what's going to happen in five years. But when I travel around the U.S., as you and I have talked about, almost every place I go to is booming. Boston is doing great. Minneapolis is doing great. Of course, Seattle and San Francisco and L.A., Washington, D.C., Atlanta, and all these places that I visit, Nashville, Des Moines, Iowa, <laughs> be surprised, Salt Lake City. Sure. Uh, and so I think the U.S. is doing better than a lot of people think. And with retail sales up 5.8% year to year, I'm going like, yes, that's what I see. And an unemployment rate of 4.1%, that's what I see. So I think the U.S. economy is doing well. This is the first tax cut that's being applied to a really strong economy. Is this tax cut fair? Boy, it's unpopular with the public. Quickly here, is a tax cut uh, a good thing for our, our viewers and listeners? It's good. Uh, you know, they say that it's going to increase the deficit by a trillion dollars or a trillion and a half. And so I guess that means that they're going to put that much money in, into the economy. And I would think if they do that, it will be good, at least for s some pieces of the economy, particularly the corporate sector. But in the, we've had seven tax cuts since Kennedy, including Kennedy. The average unemployment rate for those seven was 7%. It's we're a little put, bit lower than that right now. <laughs> like, like four. <laughs> yeah, we may get a three-handle this year as well. Yeah. Ed Iman, thank you so much. Yeah. Greatly appreciate Tom, my it. my pleasure. A view forward here to 2018 with Ed Hyman of Evercore ISI, their chairman and, of course, head of their economic research uh, team. That is it for our Bloomberg Surveillance year-ahead look on television and radio. Thrilled that you've been with us. Don't forget uh, all of our work into 2018, where we'll look at the best of economics, finance, investment, yes, of international relations, and global politics. Have a great 2018.